Here we are with the Luscom. I'm going to be removing this micro air transponder and replacing it with the trig. Ordered the TT22 uh, transponder, which is the certified unit. Also, the GPS to do the ADSB is the TN70 and an antenna that came with it, which was the TA70. So this is the transponder. Comes with the head unit and the uh, radio associated with it. These little adapters are so that the head unit can fit in a round hole. On the back is the little nipple that you attach your static line to. It has a built-in encoder, a nine pin connector on the back. So that's kind of the head unit. The uh, rest of it comes on this tray. It's detachable. Um, you see it's TT22. Um, has a 25 pin connector there and then the TNC uh, threaded uh, antenna connector there. That also comes with uh, some line for the static, some connectors for that, bag full of stuff for the connectors, pins, TNC connector there. There you go. GPS unit, this is uh, NextNav brand, but that's what they sell. Um, it's a little bit large. You see it's the Trig TN70. Another 25 pin connector and another TNC connector. It also comes with its bag of connector parts and two antenna crimps. They're 90 and a straight. And then it comes with its own antenna. TA70. I'm going to show you locations where we're going to install the new trig transponder components. So behind the seat is going to be the antenna for the GPS. Has to be on a flat portion of the skin. All right, up under the panel. You can see the old transponder. That's all going to be removed. Above it, on the bottom of the glare shield, is the associated encoder. That'll be removed. In the encoder's place will be the radio unit. For the trig and then in place of all of that for the head unit the trig will be installed on the back of the instrument panel there also has to be a gps receiver that gps receiver will get installed over here on the bottom of the glove box that's currently removed i've removed the old transponder the glove box is removed, also the radio just for ease of access. The uh, encoder has also been removed. Next is working on the wiring. The old ACK encoder was mounted on this bracket to the underside of the clear shield. Um, unfortunately, um, the bracket actually goes the opposite direction. So you can't use the same holes either. The hole pattern is a little bit different. Here's the mounting tray. Touch this bracket and the bracket will go up on the bottom of the glare shield. At this point the radio bracket is installed under the glare shield. You can see it in there. It's attached to the green bracket that's then actually screwed to the glare shield. Next we're going to mount the radio to it. So here's the radio mounted. Here's the head unit, preparing to install it. One of their suggestions was to put a rubber band around these clips. 
that uh, make the trig fit in a round hole. And then there's some long 440 screws that are countersunk that go into that. Here's the head unit installed. Bit of a tight fit, but it uh, snug down pretty well. The rubber band helped getting it in there without those pieces falling off. Here's a look at the uh, connectors that come in the kit. There's the 25 pin connector. You can see it comes with a uh, connector that has three options for the, the wires to come out with a couple little blanks to fill them in. This is I think a nine pin. Same thing, two little blanks that come with it to fill in. You have three options for which side that comes out of. It's pretty handy. The RG400 antenna cable. Um, the unit comes with a number of connectors for it, but these are for connecting to the antennas. They're uh, BNC connectors that I ordered separate for my uh, transponder antenna and eventually my com antenna. This is a 22 gauge uh, shielded uh, two conductor. It's what they suggest using for the uh, communications and power to the GPS unit. And then uh, some 20 gauge for between the head unit and the, the radio unit and also power. To others. For this project I actually got this DMC crimper and the uh, positioner for it. Here's the uh, nine pin connector assembled. Got uh, two grounds, one for the power, one for the power on controller, and then the, uh, the marked and twisted for the communications. The uh, 25 pin connector that connects the TT22, and then on the other end, the 9 pin that hooks to the head unit, the TC20. Most of the harness done for the transponder now. Uh, that connects to the main unit and then to the head unit I've got all the uh, power and everything and then the, the data between the, the head unit and main unit and uh, next is uh, working on the connections for the uh, TN70 the GPS they suggest uh, on these communication cables to have them shielded and have them grounded at each uh, terminus um, just show you what I've done for that is um, I've added this little pigtail that suggests uh, no more than three inches, so I'll trim that back. But it's a 22 gauge. These connectors are complete. Got everything squeezed in there. The uh, connector goes to the head unit, and then this is uh, power and data, as well as this little pigtail that's coming out for ground for the shield of that data. The GPS. Nearly all the wiring is complete. This is the connector that will go on the um, GPS unit. I've got uh, all the wires terminated for that. Um, one set, both of them have uh, pigtails for grounding uh, the shields. Um, one set is for power and uh, one set is for data. And they'll go into the GPS unit and then through the rest of the plane. Working on the transponder antenna now, um, the cable for it. This is RG400 um, and the supplied TNC connectors. Um, they were a little bit tight. Um, the RG400 has a double shielding and so it was a little bit tight getting the ferrule on. And uh, same thing for the pin um, onto the center conductor, but it did fit. Um, I'm using uh, an RG58 crimper for it. Um, the RG58 pin and the outside ferrule crimp is the same size as the TNC connector. On the antenna cable for the transponder, TNC connectors on this end. This is going to be the BNC connector that goes to the antenna on the bottom of the aircraft. This is actually a BNC um, 90 degree, but it's very similar to uh, doing the uh, straight ones. The difference is, is that um, 
This uses a little solder joint uh, at the very tip for the metal contactor and not um, a crimp on kind of transponder antennas pretty much complete. A little bit of a solder joint in the middle there, a little dab of solder and that's fixed. Crimped the ferrule on and some heat shrink over it. And then this little button goes in the end. That's all. Here's the new antenna cable for the transponder right on install. Here's the new transponder antenna installed. You can see it's down there with that 90 degree on it. It travels up along the edge here. Up around. And back up around to the other side where the transponder Working on getting the antenna routed for the GPS unit. Got the one end terminated already with the 90. That'll be the one under the dash. The um, GPS will mount kind of right in the center there where the uh, glove box is missing. And then it's going to come through where you can see the RG400 now. And uh, up and over the door frame the back where it'll mount here. Ready to mount the Trig GPS antenna. It um, has kind of a, an o-ring on the bottom here um, and where I'm mounting it up on the back here is mostly flat but has a little bit of a curve to it so um, what I'm going to mount on the inside is this plate to help um, flatten and ensure that that o-ring sits cleanly. That was the uh, mounting hole that was already there. I removed a plate and then I just uh, widened the, the center hole a little bit and then added the, the mounting holes for the... Here's the GPS antenna installed on the mount. Nice clean mount. I've mounted the GPS receiver. I've mounted it to the bottom of the glove box. One of the last connections to make, I just snapped the pins in for the uh, power for the GPS unit. I was waiting on that to make sure all the rest everything fit. I didn't have to take out any other wires. Ready to assemble the GPS unit. Just finished the install of the antenna for the GPS. You can see it's looped up there. Eventually we'll put a 90 degree on that. It goes uh, through the wing root and then comes out down here under the panel where you can see it's attached to the uh, GPS that's under the glove box. You can see the ground attached there as well as the 25-pin uh, connector with the two lines. That's all attached to the glove box. The rest of the unit is installed up top. You can see it's there. That's the radio unit and then the head unit is up here. You can see the back of it there. But unit powers up in a uh, setup mode. Um, I've already gone through it once, but I'll show you all the settings I've got. So we're going to press enter. This is the uh, end number. This mode S address um, comes from specific to your aircraft. You can get it from the FAA registry on your aircraft. It's a hexadecimal number. VFR squawk for the US. Maximum airspeed, I've got 75 to 150 knots. Category light fixed wing. I don't have a squat switch, so it's not connected. TIS output would be a, an external display for traffic, I don't have one. Um, GPS source is from the next nav receiver. 
speed here's the baud rate um, certification level Charlie um, 10 meters per second for the velocity these were uh, supplied from trig for me um, length 7 meters width 11 meters GPS position offset this would be for a large transport or something like that where the antenna is not near the uh, center of the aircraft um, if that is unknown I do not have a 1090 megahertz receiver installed or a UAT receiver current voltage level they say between 6 and 5 volts is acceptable you can do a encoder calibration I'm not going to do that uh, pressure altitude and uh, some data that's all go ahead and shut it off